Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a uh, Wednesday, May 28th, 2025 is the date, 11.52 a.m. As I mentioned, uh, California time here. Uh, latest activity shows uh, some continued movement here across Northern California. Got a uh, decent uptick in earthquake activity out here. A couple earthquakes in the last hour or so. Um, 2.3, it looks to be the latest one here, just off the... A lot of activity across the southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. One up north around Eureka. This one about seven miles deep here from early this morning as well. A lot of trimmer activity has been taking place underneath the northern California area and the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone down into the, uh, the slow slip range. Let me show you guys here real quick. Uh, yesterday's trimmer count was uh, still somewhat elevated at 238 epicenters of trimmer there underneath the uh, Oregon and Northern California region. Now to see the extent of all this trimmer activity, we've got to go back the last couple weeks here. As you can see on the map, this is not surface earthquake activity. It's not even earthquake activity in general. This is just slow slip events that are being recorded. Uh, very low frequency vibrations that happen when uh, the subducting plate and the, over, the overlaying plate here move past one another so we're getting a lot of um, trimmer activity slow slip events a lot of movement happening down into the deeper area of the Cascadia that adding further strain upstream across the locked zone and uh, Northern California has just been uh, kicking up a lot of earthquake activity here since this ongoing trimmer event uh, kicked up here a couple weeks ago got about 24 earthquakes of various magnitudes including a couple fours up here 4.6 uh, from two days ago and also 4.1 number of threes in there as well uh, as I've always said though there's a higher chance of seeing a large earthquake strike out here when we're exper experiencing these trimmer events underneath the area uh, so just keep an eye there on the um, Cascadia subduction zone the southern end here could obviously see some larger activity it's uh, you know you just never know right you got to watch for these little signs elevated trimmer resulting in upstream earthquake activity um, it's just one of those things that you have to watch and observe no guarantee we're going to see a big earthquake but then again there's no guarantee we're not you just got to be prepared uh, Washington area a couple of smaller earthquakes outside of Seattle and the Cascades nothing major going on there for now um, Let's see what else we got here across Northern California, out around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Um, 2.4. It's around the geysers. And technically, there's no geysers out there. It's just hydrothermal plants utilizing the uh, heated areas below to cr uh, produce energy. There's a number of uh, geothermal plants out here all over the place. In fact, there's probably at least 15 or 20 of them. These are the uh, some of the facilities out there. Looks like uh, this area back here, though, is a little hot spot for earthquake activity uh, for now. But uh, as you can see here, there's just a number of those geothermal plants. Uh, there's always earthquake activity happening out there. All right, uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco, has gone quiet once again, aside from a couple earthquakes there from yesterday. Um, just an odd deal. It's been way, way too quiet there across San Francisco. Uh, further down south, Southern California looks a little spotty as well. Um, one earthquake above 2.5. In fact, a 3.3 down there outside of Borrego Springs early this morning, it looks like. Uh, that is just off of a portion of the Elsinore Fault, I believe. Yep. Uh, in between the Elsinore Fault and the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, got a little trail actually stretching across this area. Uh, but nothing big going on there for now. The park field segment of the San Andreas Fault pretty quiet as well. And the southern branch, where the 8.1 earthquake will strike one day, remains quiet. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there across the uh, size or the USGS map. Let's go double check the seismograph station, see what we have uh, on this Wednesday. Uh, looking at the data here, not a whole lot. Really, uh, just some outside interference, maybe some distant earthquakes. I believe that's the uh, yesterday's 
six-pointer that struck down, or close to a six-pointer, uh, 5.9, 5.8 that struck off the coast of Mexico there. It does show up on the uh, distant seismograph station, so uh, happens quite a bit. Oil fields of Oklahoma and Texas still getting hit. The New Madrid seismic zone quiet. So let's see what we got going on here following this earthquake activity from yesterday. It looks like a little bit of heightened movement further down south, although that's a lot of older activity there. A lot of red rings indicating that older movement. Uh, newer activity there in the Peru region with a uh, couple of fives stirring up there today, it looks like. Including the five point, what do we got? 5.1 right here. Let me go back to the newest. That's going to be a 4.4 there in the uh, red circle. Now the blue circle there. 99 miles deep into that subduction zone. Got a bunch of fives stirring up here. Keep an eye on this area. I know over the last week we've seen a decent swarm down here across the center portion of that subduction zone. But it looks like it's working its way up north now. And... Um, so we've got a deeper earthquake event there in the red. Some shallow earthquake activity prior. Just could be looking at something larger taking place there across that subduction zone. Uh, soon, near term. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Some older movement north here of Iceland and Greenland. Uh, the rest of the model, let's see. Nothing going on across the Nankai Trough yet. Japan area, pretty quiet. Uh, we do have a 5.8 out there around the Mariana Islands area. Let's see here. Outside of Guam, it looks like, early this morning, 6.30 or so for a 5.8. A number of upper fives here in the last 24 hours. Uh, no six-pointers yet. New Zealand, pretty quiet down there. Uh, so just keep an eye on things here today. See what... Uh, See what we have in store. You just never know. Each day is a new and exciting day. Just never know what's going to happen out here. Uh, what do we got? Another one stirring up there across Northern California? Or were there two of them? I think there was two, right? Yeah. Either way, just watch that area. It's been, it's been super active. Look at the last 30 days here of earthquake activity, specifically in this zone. 71 earthquakes. And uh, most, mostly right around that triple point boundary there between the Juan de Fuca plate, the North American plate, and the Pacific plate here to the south. But we are getting a little bit of earthquake activity into the Cascadia subduction zone there in the last 30 days. Um, just a little deep uh, underneath that area of that major subduction zone. Looks like a couple up north as well. 1.7 from a couple days ago. Is there a two-pointer? Either way, just be prepared, folks. Uh, space weather activity. Let's go ahead and check this out real quick. We got, uh, well, pretty uh, quiet, it looks like, after a number of M flares, even some X flare activity there a couple days ago. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. There's a couple different sunspots, 4099 and 4100 fairly massive uh, in coverage area still complex as well uh, that's this is not going to gone away yet uh, so I'm still keeping my elevated flare threat uh, issued on the live stream uh, this area back here is still showing some uh, complexity magnetic complexity so I'm not uh, not really uh, discrediting those uh, sunspots here uh, they could pr produce, obviously, some stronger solar flares with the dynamics that they have. At least in my observations, I'm seeing still quite a bit of complexity. Uh, overall flare threat, these guys are showing a 50% for an M flare, 10% for an X flare. And uh, just over the last 24 hours or so, a number of M flare or uh, C flares starting to get a little sizzling going on, though. Notice that uh, really spiky, consistent C flare activity. That's a sign of complexity within those sunspots so I still think we got a chance of seeing a, an X flare or so from uh, either one of these 4100 or 4099 uh, no major wars there in the forecast for now looks like maybe a G1 yeah, I don't even think that's going to happen I think that was a, a miss 
They put up a G1 class storm here a couple days ago because of a coronal hole that's been facing us, number 52, but it's just, it's really thin. And uh, even though it was directly facing the earth here, there's just not much associated with it. So I don't think we're going to see anything of any noteworthy uh, aurora activity from that uh, coronal hole. A uh, quick glance here at the next close approach asteroids here. Let's see if we're working. I think we are, hopefully. What's going on? NASA trying to connect it. There we go. Uh, let's see. Today, newly discovered 34-foot uh, bus size asteroid. It's coming in within about 200 and 11,000 miles here. That's still fairly safe. The rest of these are all millions of miles away, so that's uh, a good deal with respect to those uh, those asteroids out there in space. I want to keep them far away. Something's going on with that window, and I'm not for sure why. It's weird. All right. Storm Prediction Center for severe weather. Slight risk. It looks like across Texas area and... Uh, Oklahoma, Colorado, Kansas. Got some tornado activity out there today, potentially, in the forecast. Wind and some big-time hail threats up there across western Kansas. So just stay weather aware, folks, if you're uh, out and about today. Uh, seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there across the map. Uh, waiting on some big-time heat out here across California here soon. Looks like this Friday we got a massive high pressure that's going to park uh, directly over uh, the Pacific Northwest. And we are going to cook out here above probably around 109, 110 degrees for Friday and Saturday coming up. And then after that we get a little bit of a cool period uh, with a low pressure swooping down there from the north. Uh, bringing some below average temperatures. So I'll take it. I'll take the uh, cooler weather over 110 any day. I don't know who wants 110 all right, I'm out of here, folks. Um, have a good one. We will see you guys back out here a little bit later on for the Wednesday night update. Just stay safe. And uh, like I say, anything can happen at any given time. A lot of earthquakes happening up there in Northern California. Tremor activity remains elevated. Just uh, be on guard. We'll see you guys out here a little bit later.